YouTube community and friends, it's official at Jay's Real Reef UK, we've hit the ugly stage. Diatoms, cyanobacteria and looking for a natural solution to get me out of this sticky mess. Roll the titles. Unfortunately, the tides changed on my little Red Sea Max Nano. I celebrated the highlights of the four month mark in my previous video, looking at the corals and the life that's in the tank. And that was a great milestone in our journey because chapter two starts off with a major issue. And that's come down from diatoms or cyanobacteria. The ugly or the dirty stage. Now, after I've looked into this, we're not the only people to go through this. This is a very common stage as a new tank like this one is established. The problem is, most people have experienced this before. As a novice reefer, this is the first time I'm going to take on the challenge of tackling diatoms or cyanobacteria. Now, I'm not too sure if I've got both or just one of them. So what I'm going to do is going to get you off the stand and give you a closer look at what I can see on the sand bed and on the rocks. And if you can help me identify it, I'd really appreciate that. Stick it down in the comments below. Let's have a closer look at what's going on. It's not looking too great, is it, after uh, those close-up shots? And that's what I'm having to look at over the last five days whilst I'm sat here doing my work. And to be honest, the fish uh, and the corals are not that bothered. They don't seem that affected by it. Now, I do know that diatoms and cyanobacteria can actually deoxygenate the water, uh, and that can stress the fish out. So I do want to sort it out, but the only person it appears to be bothering at the moment is me, and it is really bothering me. The tank looks without swearing because I know children watch this channel rubbish I'll keep it at that it actually looks like the bottom of the sewer and I feel that everybody else's tanks on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube is better than mine at the moment
so it's been about a, a week. I'm going to say a week. It feels like a week. It's been 24 hours. 24 hours like your... Since I cleaned the tank. Can't sing. Honestly, can't sing. Uh, since I did the big deep clean. And I hope for that was useful. I know some of you will be watching thinking, you know what? It's just doing maintenance. Well, that is the key. With all of these, a lot of these issues in reefing, I'm finding that just keeping up with regular maintenance, you actually avoid 90% of problems. So, I've got a four-pronged attack on my diatoms and cyano issue. Number one, stability. I'm aiming for a stable parameters as much as possible. Salinity needs to sit at the same level. Uh, my pH at the moment is sitting at 8.3. I've got the window open, letting plenty of fresh air in. 8.3 is, is a really nice kind of uh, anything between 8 and 8.5. Obviously in these winter months when we're all trapped in our houses and we're all kind of breathing in, uh, there's a lot of carbon dioxide around that can cause acidification of the reef. So keeping the air open, nice high pH, nice high alkalinity, keeping that phosphates nice and low around about 0.5 one-ish if possible nitrates as well keeping those ticking over so stability is my first ally in this battle my second ally is bacteria and cleanup crew let's put them together so I dose Dr Tim's bacteria and I know that they eventually will outcompete the cyano and diatoms now at the moment the diatoms and the cyanos taking over the bacteria so it's going to take a good few weeks for that battle to change its course but I know that they will help me I'm also going to pick up a couple more conch snails because I need I need some sand turning over the wave maker I've turned right up because that's going to help me turn the sand particles over and stop the diatoms from forming. So some new cleanup crew, I'm also going to get some more snails for the rock work. So that's my number two. Number three, coralline algae. Now I have got some coralline algae. I imported it on that frag from Tank Tales. I don't know if you remember. The raptozoas that never opened. Well guess what? No, they haven't opened. They still haven't opened. They're here, sat up here. But they do start like, they kind of change shape and they look like they're showing some colour at the top. So I still have hope. Never give up hope on, uh, on Zoas. Uh, anyway, they might open up. But on that frag plug from Tank Tales, there was some coralline algae. And I've noticed this now that I can see it in other areas of the rock work, okay? Now, if I can get that coralline algae more widespread across the rock work, that will outcompete the uh, cyano and any diatoms that's knocking about. So that's my third ally in the battle, okay? The fourth ally, which is the biggest ally in any right reef, tank, reef tanking battle, is water changes as you know you've got to keep up with your water changes if you've got an issue with that tank do a water change and however big that water change is that's how much you reduce the problem by so i did a 40 percent water change and i've got rid of 40 percent i would say of my diatoms and cyano problem there's still some in there and i'm going to sit it out and wait a few more days and see how we go but water changes is absolutely critical to getting rid of a lot of problems in reefing now i've done a 40 percent water change uh, tomorrow i'm going to do another 30 percent water change and then in about two or three days time i'm going to do a 20 to 10 percent water change that's three water changes in one whole week and that should help me uh, restabilize the parameters, rejuvenate the water and also get rid of some of those issues that I'm facing with diatoms and cyanobacteria. So I've already talked about the wave maker that's going to be a major ally in this battle as well because cyano and diatoms they thrive in dead spots in the tank and I've only got one power head in this tank so we're starting to see areas where there are bits of dead spots kind of forming so I've turned the wave maker up, get more flow, more aeration of the water, that'll increase the pH as well. Also, the, uh, the putting air bubbles in the water will help the bacteria grow quicker and colonize, so that will all help. Turn up the wave maker, it's near the surface as you can see, and that's gonna add to the aeration of the water, increasing the pH and increasing the oxygenation of the water. As you already know from the first part of my video, uh, cyano and diatoms will deoxygenate the water and that might affect the fish. So if I can get that oxygen in there, that will be brilliant. Now, what I'm also gonna do is look at buying a cheap power head. I don't want it uh, as a permanent fixture, but I'm thinking about getting one for this side of the tank here so I've got two power heads it's only a nano tank blowing in different directions and that should aerate the flow the reason why I don't want it permanently is because 
I don't feel it would look very good on this side of the display so I am looking at that as well you probably also notice that my lights have changed now I've also learned that diatoms and cyanobacteria are photoplankton and they love the white lights now the curtains are wide open but they've not been open all day I've had them shut uh, this light that's in the background here is just for filming I'm actually running now predominantly blue lights on the tank okay now the blue lights will allow coral growth. It does not affect the fish and the cleanup crew, but it does affect the photoplankton, cyano and diatoms. They're photosynthetic plants and they love white light. So I've starving them, the little things, of white light. And the way I'm doing that is on the uh, Radiant uh, I bought an XR15 blue. Now the reason why I bought blue is because it, apparently it makes corals grow slightly quicker. But actually now it was a it's a pretty smart move because it's going to help me uh, tackle the diatoms and the cyano. Now on the Mobius app there is a template which is uh, called I'm just going to scroll to it Radiant Color. Now Radiant Color is a predominantly blue spectrum light uh, which will grow my corals keep my fish happy and keep them pesky diatoms and cyanos at bay so I've gone all blue on the spectrum here so that's another way in which I'm going to try and take the battle naturally to the diatoms and cyano and actually I mean it's not perfect it's only 12 hours after I originally did the big cleanup but it's a lot better it's a lot better and I feel that with those successive water changes I can get on top of this battle now if I can't get on top of this battle I am going to resort to this product this is my next form of defense which is another Dr. Tim's product called Waste Away now if you watch this channel and you've used this product I'd love to hear from you uh, how effective is Dr. Tim's Waste Away at getting rid of things like diatoms on the sandbed and cyanobacteria I would really like to know in the comments let me know now a couple of other things I'm doing to take on this battle now I know I think I know what the cause of my outbreak was this this is an awesome product I love it it really grows your corals quickly and it brings a lot of color but if you haven't got many corals then don't use it because actually it becomes food for other things in the tank uh, and that's what I found now I know what you're all saying get some corals in that tank you're always saying you know you're not got enough corals I know that chapter two is all about corals in Jay's Real Reef UK and on that note I've actually ordered uh, two mushroom corals coming from Prestige Reef next Tuesday thanks Ryan if you're watching I appreciate that looking forward to my mushroom corals but I'm also going to pick up a few more corals from Cell Marine when I go get a bit more cleanup crew to help me in my nat natural battle to tackling diatoms and cyano so you don't need to dose if um, if you've only got a few fish and corals don't dose I think I've learned the hard way you don't need to just do regular water changes also um, excess food in the tank so now I'm gonna go to a, a strategy of spot feeding so just using frozen I'm gonna avoid the pellets because they they kind of go everywhere and they're quite high in phosphates for now so I'm going to leave those I'm going to use frozen and I'm only going to use a small amount of frozen and I'm going to spot feed the fish and uh, and the cleanup crew so they get exactly what they need to survive so there's no excess nutrients okay so we'll see how it goes I'll let you know how it goes in the next week and hopefully we get on top of all these issues now you probably noticed as well if you're watching and you've got an eagle eye that I haven't got my clear view lid that I had in my previous videos. Reef Cube Dan. Reef Cube Dan commented in one of my videos saying, you know what, I actually prefer the D&D &D jump guard. And I was sat in the office whilst I was doing my work and I was like, you know what, he's right. Because the D&D &D jump guard with its black kind of mirrored finish, really thin profile, actually goes better with the back wall and the glass of the uh, Red Sea Max Nano. So don't waste your money guys. It was too late. I already bought the Clearview lid before I had my D&D &D, uh, but it took so long to arrive I actually bought the D&D &D just to kind of as a gap fill and that gap fill has now become a permanent fixture. So yeah I've gone with a D&D &D jump guard. So that's where we are. Um, and I think that's probably about it for today really. I've told you all about what's happening in the reef tank. 
So if you've enjoyed today's video and you're still watching, give us a thumbs up. Really appreciate your support, guys. I love the comments and I try and get back to every single one of you. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, yeah, give us a subscription. Um, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll know when we can post out our next video. Our next video is probably going to be our coral shop from Prestige Reef, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I wish all of you the best. And I know my, my diatoms and cyanide are not a big problem, really, in the whole scale of what everybody's going through at the moment. But... Hopefully this little video helps out some of you to tackle some of the problems that I'm experiencing too. So for now, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>